According to Statistic Canada's Canadian Income Survey from 2021, 5.8 million Canadians, including 1.4 million children, were food insecure. Taking a closer look at home, last year, the Winnipeg Christmas Cheer Board handed out over 18,000 Christmas hampers, and the need is growing. We've all felt the pinch of food costs and inflation, so this holiday season, it's more important than ever to support our communities. And we have Shauna Bell from the Christmas Cheer Board to tell us how we can help out. My name is Shauna Bell, and I've been the Executive Director of the Christmas Cheer Board since 2021. So this is my third Christmas season with Cheer Board. So you started kind of right in the midst of COVID. I certainly did. You know, the first year I was working with Kai in 2020, and we had a bunch of things that sort of shut down that almost forced us not to be able to do anything in 2020. And um, we found a workaround. So we were able to get out gift cards. And then the next year, I really, working with our board, I said to them, we're the cheer board and we give out presents and uh, for families. So gift cards are one thing, but if there's not a gift for those children, well, we got to make that work. So we brought gifts back, which was to me essential for our 2021 season. Of course. And we'll definitely get much more in depth to what that kind of looked like and what we're uh, heading into. But just for starters, what is the Christmas cheer board and how long has it been in operations here in Winnipeg? A bunch of us fondly think of it around here as the as Winnipeg's oldest pop-up. So we've been working for 104 years. This is going to be, uh, we started out in 1919. And when I say we, I mean the cheer board itself, because some days I feel like I've been here since 1919, <laughs> but mostly it's just the organization. <laughs> Though we do have some very, very long-serving volunteers who have been here for quite some time. So the cheer board originally started with a bunch of uh, church organizations looking to help support uh, the families, uh, widows and orphans uh, coming out of the First World War. Then that sort of migrated over the years to becoming just a social agency that really helps support individuals, families, really across the city at what can be a very stressful time of the year. And over probably, I'd say, the last 30 years, we've become more of a structured organization. And it was incorporated, I think, in 1982. So I guess that's more than 30 years ago. That's like 45. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, that's absolutely incredible that this organization has been around for over a century now. Yeah. But also a little sad to know that we need organizations like this to help people during some of these most difficult times. Yes. So you mentioned kind of like a pop-up. So does that mean that you're not in operation year-round? I am the only year-round employee with the cheer board. The rest of our folks come in in October, and then they're here with us until early January. The planning and the the trying to find a new location, which seems to be kind of our, our cross to bear over the last few years, um, is something that I look after in the off-season, in the off season. And then um, during the full season, we have about, in the, well, we have upwards four other term staff, but then we have upwards of 300 to 350 volunteers that are on site too. When we're looking at, you're mentioning getting hampers and everything ready at this time of year. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest challenges families are facing right now as we're kind of readjusting during the pandemic? So maybe let's go a little bit deeper. Like, what were things like, you were mentioning that you could only really hand out gift cards and you tried really, really hard to get those gifts. Kind of what was that shift in change that you saw during COVID versus now, though, like it's still kind of there. It's not as big of a concern as initially was back in the uh, height at 2021. Thinking back on 2021 and just the extra steps that we needed to go get into just to make things happen that year, it was tough. It was very, very difficult because, um, first of all, there was all the protective measures that were in place and ensuring people coming into our facility were, were masked and uh, that everyone was safe on site. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you that it, that first year that I was on board in 2021, it went as smoothly as we could have hoped it to go in such a rocky year. 
But then coming into 2022 last year, when the masks came off and uh, things started operating a little bit more like they used to, then we noticed that a lot of people were getting sick. It was kind of a bit of a disastrous season for us last year with so many of our own team falling ill. And my mantra is that if you're sick, you stay home. We don't need more people sick and we don't need them coming out of the building and, and taking that and sharing that with their family and what might be some vulnerable folks. Exactly. So, yeah. So we had, to, we had a tough time last year, but we persevered. And we managed to get over 18,000 hampers out the door, which was our largest number um, in recent history. Uh, I wow. say that because we have a more accurate way of uh, actually accounting for each and every hamper that makes its way out the door now. So that was kind of one of the big steps we took in, in the second year of COVID was automating a few more things so we could track statistics and, and get a better understanding of how we were serving folks and who we were serving. It's been a bit of a... There's been a lot of change here, but it's all been changed for the good to sort of bring us along and keep us up to date with some of the technologies that are in place and have been in place for a while. But <laughs> as a nonprofit, sometimes things take a little bit longer, especially with COVID and everything. It kind of pushed everything really far back. But it, I, I think it's really cool that you now have these technologies. You're better to uh, you have a better way of counting and understanding the numbers because when you have a more accurate count uh, you can paint a better picture of the needs in the community it's not just like oh, this is approximate it's like here's a much more concrete number of people we've helped and give an idea of hey this is the number that we're seeing year after year like we need to start making some change that's exactly it you know i mean one of the big changes we made a couple of years ago was uh, discontinuing distribution of turkeys and chickens and you know we did that for a number of reasons ryan one of the biggest reasons uh, was cost i'm not gonna lie about that but also we started really understanding who our clients were a lot more and seeing that either folks because of their um their their nationality they didn't they didn't really have a background in cooking a dinner that involved turkey so that sort of stripped that off and then some folks don't have an oven that could accommodate that don't have um, the knowledge or, or the comfort level of cooking a turkey it, you know just there's so many factors that come into play with that and we thought you know what we can do a better job of providing more food in those hampers that extend beyond one meal than really looking at just giving somebody one meal does not keep you in good health for anything longer than one meal. So if we can do a better job of giving people food that can last up to a week for them, um, I think we're servicing them more appropriately. And, um, you know, I mean, there's not always gonna be folks, I, I look at it this way, we're not gonna get it 100% right ever, but we're gonna try and do the best for the majority that we can. It's a learning experience, taking those opportunities. As you mentioned, you never know what sort of background of the people who need these foods are. So like I, I know other or organizations who are trying to help out, you know, they, they moved away from Christmas hams to aid either Jewish families or uh, Muslim families so that more people can be included. It's really cool to see that you're also taking those uh, steps to ensure that those who need aid over the Christmas season can get it. Inclusion is a huge piece of how we're sort of trying to keep up. Last year, just being on the front lines, I, I had family approach and they came to get their hamper and they said, is it halal? And I said, no, unfortunately it's not. And realized that these are areas that we need to we need to be respectful of people and that includes folks with uh you know if, if they've got dietary restrictions or allergies we have to realize it's not a one size fits all and so we're, we've really been working hard on that because we are in the pantry items the dry goods um, area we can't provide stuff with any sort of uh, limited shelf life so we, we look at gift cards as an option where we can't meet them with their needs. So at least it helps support them in some way. As we're kind of looking ahead into this holiday season, and I know it's a little early now, but what sort of numbers are you anticipating? Last year, you said you, you had 18,000 hampers. Is that kind of like the number that we're going to be looking at this year? 
or is it going to increase as, you know, we've seen in infl- like I felt it every time I go to the grocery store, you look at prices and you're like, hey, this is like $5 more than it was at the beginning of the pandemic. I look at where we were at with the cost of groceries last year and even the year before, well, not so going back to 20, 2019 now, is it that far back? Yes, it was. So going that far back, I believe we were at we're at a 25% increase in the cost of product. That's significant. And especially when you look at uh, most services that people rely on have not increased, whether it be their wages, whether it be uh, the supports, the income supports that they receive, those haven't increased. So, you know, you're looking at a very I think a very heavy weight to bear for families and individuals who are living below and sometimes not even below above the poverty level now too. It's a struggle. And like you said, if you're giving pause when you're in the store to think about whether you need whatever it is on your list, think about the folks who have to make a really tough decision about whether they're buying um, food for their table or whether they're paying um, a rent bill or, or, you know, or a heat bill. Uh, it's just, it's, it's an impossible situation to put people in. It's always important. And that's why I think having conversations like this right now are great to bring awareness. Cause for some people they say to you, like you mentioned taking that pause, you see an item, you're like, what, what, this is crazy. I mm-hmm. guess I'll wait till there's a, a deal or something to buy uh, meat this week or something like that. If, if you're kind of in a well-off place and you st- are generally don't have to be too concerned, if those are the questions you're having, as you mentioned, for people, like, you're like, well, guess this is no food this, uh, this day, sort of. Like, that is just, I, I think just our current uh, situation that we're seeing kind of globally mm-hmm. is frightening, to, uh, to be honest, and... At times like this, it's more important than ever to come together, to work together as a community, to support each other. So you're you're mentioning pantry items and other non-perishables. What are, in terms of people who want to donate, who have the resources to give this season, what are items that the cheer board is uh, looking for? Whether that's food items, or as you mentioned, gifts and things for uh, kids and uh, families? You know, um, some of the big items that we always look for is rice, pasta. Um, we try and, and provide a little bit of a treat for the kids too. So, well, even the adults like cookies as well too, let's be honest. But, you know, we try and make it as fulsome as possible. So if there's canned tuna or even um, some, I'm just trying to think of some soups that we can add on to the to the hampers, we try and look at manageable sizes of these um, packages because, Um, It's very generous when people look to giving us a 20 pound bag of rice, but unfortunately that does not fit into a box. So then, and we we can't open it up and divvy it up. So uh, we end up giving those items out to large families. So I always say, you know, if you're looking at the one kilogram average, that's fantastic for anything like that. And then also I think a couple really important staples are flour and sugar, although sugar is very hard to come by right now. Yeah, I just saw that in the news that here in Manitoba we're at a sugar shortage. It is. And, you know, we got our sugar. I'm going to go a little off topic here, but I ordered everything back in June for our groceries. And I was told in October that the half of our sugar wasn't coming. So that was devastating for us because we like to include that in the hamper. Um, and it, there's just no end in sight for it. So unfortunately, that's kind of a reality we, we have to face this year. But um, but in terms of gifts for the children, it's always that uh, 10 to 14 year age group that's the most challenging for us to find gifts for. I remember being that age. Right. What did you want? Nothing that your parents gave you. That's what you wanted. And so it's so like I look at gift cards as being something that we can get to the kids and, and then they can pick what they want, uh, especially gift cards for like chapters or, you know, even um, I'm just trying to think of some of the other things we we encourage board games and any kind of science activities. Those are huge. And then, you know, I mean, the gals like tend to like gift cards for Claire's and all that kind of stuff. So anything that you can get that really sort of speaks to that preteen, teen sort of age grouping is really sort of where where we find our biggest challenge. This could be a great opportunity for families with kids within that age to start having those conversations, get them involved to be like, hey, what would you like? What do you think 
someone within the community would like as well. So like, it's a great opportunity to have those conversations with your children very early on. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and getting kids involved is a huge side of things for us too. We have schools that come in and pack hampers. Actually, our first one started last Friday and they just, it's an opportunity and an education on what's actually going on behind the scenes because people are often fascinated when we pull the curtain be back and let everybody see what's actually what our operation looks like it doesn't sound very big until you walk in the building and then you go wow that's pretty significant and it disappears within two months time so the kids bringing them on site and having them pack it really turns the light on for them about what happens and and how great the need is out there as well. People can uh, help out by giving food donations. They can help out by giving monetary donations. What are some ways they can help uh, in terms of time? What are some things that you're looking at for volunteers? Mm -hmm. We're going to start opening up for delivery on December 8th this year. And that's a great opportunity. We're probably going to be seeing about 10,000 hampers that will need to go out the door and be delivered to families in need and individuals in need. So I encourage and would love to see as many people come through the door and help us get those deliveries out because it's always it's a tight two week turn to get that out the door and, and every single pair of hands that come through end up being very helpful to us. So I, that's where I would see the biggest benefit. The importance of it, like your your team uh, that's behind you uh, already working away, getting hampers and everything ready. That's right. You know, it's, it, it takes a huge team to do this. And I'm very lucky in the fact that I've got some very dedicated volunteers who, when we unfortunately had to leave the building we were in last season, they jumped to a action and got us moved packed, moved out the door and into this new location within a short period of time. Um, nothing happens here without the action of volunteers and really the community as a whole. So where can people go if they want to either become a volunteer or uh, give those uh, donations, monetary or uh, food items? They can visit us at uh, christmascheerboard.ca on the web. We accept donations via e-transfer, credit card, phone. We still accept good old-fashioned mail coming through the door. Um, and also, speaking of coming through the door, people are welcome to drop by and just come and, and see what's going on here and make a donation if they so choose. So that's a great way for folks to help out. Well, Shauna, absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. I wanted to just end on one little thing, talking about advocacy. When we're uh, you're mentioning the kids coming in, you know, they see what's happening behind the scenes well as the need. And as we're looking at whether that's houselessness, uh, food insecurity, you know, these numbers are increasing year over year. And now we have a new government in place. What are some things people should be thinking about in terms of advocacy? Are these sort of conversations that are happening of, of people sitting around packing hampers or the, is the cheer board in communications at all with the city of Winnipeg or the provincial government about these certain topics? We uh, haven't had an opportunity to talk to the new government as of yet. And, you know, I mean, typically those things are better served for us in the year after our campaign because it's such a busy time right now. But um, just thinking about a living wage and people being able to actually survive on what they're drawing for an income is such a huge thing. I really feel that there's not enough supports in place for folks who are either experiencing homelessness, if they, you know, any abuse circumstances, mental health issues. These are things that I, I am very hopeful that there will be more more programs that will help support them over the next few years, because I think that's really, especially having come out of COVID, there's been a lot of a lot of light shone on some of the vulnerabilities. And I think we really need to work hard to sew that up. I'd, I'd like to see a day when there isn't a need for the cheer board. I don't think that's going to happen anytime super soon. But, you know, I mean, that's kind of what we work towards is is, is a time when people don't need us anymore. Yeah, it's, it's that goal. So I, I guess from what you're saying is, you know, this year, we let's get ready. Let's get those donations out. Let's start handing out those hampers, helping out people. And then once the season has kind of come to a close, then it's an opportunity to start opening up that dialogue. It is. And we can actually do a better job of pulling our data and talking 
about who our recipients are and how we're serving them. And we're also actually surveying our recipients this year. We started small last year and we're doing it again because we want to see what, what their needs are and how we can sort of adapt and adjust our what we're doing to better accommodate people. So I think, you know, it's it's a it's a three prong effort. It's not just us. It's not just the government, but this, the community has to get involved and has to come to action on this. too. Yeah, it's everyone. And you know what, let's let's keep inspiring people. Let's let's get people down. Let's get people excited to help out their community. I always love it at this time of year because Ryan, I'm telling you, there's nothing like walking into the warehouse and seeing all the people who are just so happy to be here but also just looking forward to doing good things if if we took that energy and harnessed it all year long could think about how just the level of amazing work that we could do here to help folks who need us absolutely thank you again it's a pleasure thank you this is wonderful i appreciate the opportunity have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.